Hi, I'm Jim St. Ledger and I work for Intel, but I also chair the Data Plane Development Kit Project, or DBDK, Governing Board. When the project got started about 10 to 15 years ago, it was looking at the problem of the explosion of the number of devices in our lives and across networks and the amount of traffic they were consuming and generating. We knew there need, needed to be a more efficient way to move packets across the traffic. That's where DBDK was born. The community came together and decided a software implementation would complement the existing hardware that was out there from many different vendors. And if we took an approach that enabled the solution to be applied across a variety of hardware platforms, we could really move the industry forward. The first implementations provided a better than 10x performance improvement, and it's gotten significantly better ever since, and we continue to move it forward. Today we're going to talk about some of those ideas, or myths, and we're going to do a little myth busting. So please join me as we walk through some of these myths and bust them wide open. DBDK is code complete. Well, the truth about DBDK is that it's an ongoing project. If you look at how many people are involved in it and how long they've been involved in it, you'll see that we do four releases per year and we continue to do those releases per year. Why? Well, first, there's new devices and architectures coming out from the providers of this hardware on a regular basis. But second, there are new needs emerging constantly in the marketplace, whether those are accelerators or other implementation models such as containers. The fact is DBD, DBDK will continue to evolve over time to meet the needs of the communities. Any DBDK developer, as we all hear on in the room, they know that DBDK is just designed for hardware. Well, the truth is there are a lot of hardware vendors in the DBDK community, but there also are communication service providers, there are network operators, there are ISVs, there are OSVs, there are system integrators. In fact, the entire supply chain that deliver network and communication solutions to, this, to the industry for IoT, networking, enterprise, cloud, etc., they're all involved in DBDK. They're involved in different ways. Some of them are community developers, some of them are code reviewers, some are patch contributors, and some are consumers. But all of these people, from the bottom to the top, including hardware and software vendors, are involved in the DBDK project and community today. DBDK is a closed community. If you think about most open source projects, all of them have an origin story. And our origin story is a handful of people with a great idea. But then they said, let's go share this idea further and bring other people in. The community has continued to grow. If you look at the total number of companies and the total number of contributors across the project, you'll be surprised. It runs in the hundreds of people and tens of companies. It's global. It touches almost every continent and most of the companies that you're very familiar with in this industry. It's no longer a small community. In fact, it is one of the biggest networking communities out there in the open source world today. Smart nukes will kill DPDK. I've been involved in this project for over 10 years now. And every once in a while, someone comes in with, fill in the blank, we'll kill DBDK. There's always something. And what that really reflects is the evolution and revolution within our industry. There are new technologies coming up all the time, different types of accelerators. SmartNICs are no different. They are one of the newer accelerators, and in fact, the community has embraced them. There are solutions and DBDK implementation to support those SmartNICs, whether they're based on FPGA technologies, ASIC technologies, server technologies, etc. They're all embraced and a woven in part of the DBDK community community and we welcome them. What can I say? Intel controls DPDK. As someone who works at Intel, this is perhaps my favorite myth to bust wide open. Where did it, DPDK come from? Sure, it did come from Intel in the very beginning. But we also realized to make this be what it deserves to be and deliver it to the entire industry, it needs to be much broader than Intel. We've started working with many other players from the earliest years, and today the project lives in the Linux Foundation where it's hosted and has a technical board and a governing board from a multitude of companies. Is Intel involved still? Absolutely. It's a very important project for us and a very important project for our business in the networking industry. But so are many other companies, including Intel suppliers, Intel partners, Intel competitors, and Intel customers. And the way open source works, it is involving all of those people in a collaborative environment to deliver a fantastic project to move the industry forward, and we're proud of it. DPDK is only for the telco industry. 
Well, the truth is the telco industry has embraced DVDK. If you walk the floors of Mobile World Congress, you'll see it absolutely everywhere. The equipment providers are all using it, the device folks are using it, everyone's using it. But at the same time, if you walk any other show, you'll see all the cloud service providers across the world are using it. The big seven, as they call it, pretty much all have DBDK in there. If you talk to enterprise customers, they're all using it. The fact is, if you look across almost any place where traffic has to be moved and it needs to be moved fast and efficiently, DBDK is being used. It's a broad-based technology with a broad-based adoption. DBDK is not green. The people in the project are as concerned as everybody else about global warming and climate change. We're aware of the fact that our industry, IT infrastructure, telecom infrastructure, networking infrastructure, involves creating heat because our servers and processors are generating heat as they process workloads and move packets. However, DBDK is actually helping that problem by making sure it happens much more efficiently. There are also other dim dimensions of the project that have done things like enabling core frequency scaling, enabling idling of threads and processes, and enabling other techniques that help you scale up and down processes to make them much more power and energy efficient. DPDK is Linux. DPDK has a very cordial relationship with Linux. In fact, we view ourselves as complementing what happens in the Linux kernel networking stack today. It's not a replacement. It's an alternative way to do networking. The kernel networking stack is broadly used across the entire globe. It's used by enterprises everywhere. If your packet traffic is moving at a perfect rate that you need using the networking stack in the kernel, it's perfect. However, if you have small packets or mixed traffic where it's not moving as efficiently as it might be, you might look at a DBDK user space implementation as an option. I view the two as complementary. It's really a decision of the architects looking at their own particular networks and their own particular workloads to decide what works best for them. It might be DBDK, it might be Linux kernel networking stack, it might be something else. All are complementary, the choice is yours. Our community and project is designed to give you that choice. Containers in DPDK, you're talking north and south. DPDK comes from performance point of view, containers comes from elasticity point of view. They don't talk the same language. The first implementation of DPDK was on bare metal servers. But we quickly realized there was a huge opportunity to also support virtual implementations. And 10 years ago, that really meant supporting virtual machines. The community rose to the occasion and did a bunch of optimizations to make DBDK perform better in virtual environments for virtual machines. The last few years, we've of course recognized the need for container-based implementations. Many of our cloud service providers, whether they're data center cloud or telco cloud, are embracing container implementations. And DBDK functions very well in that environment. In fact, the DBDK project itself has created multiple plugins to create a more optimal solution of using DBDK in containers. For example, these plugins include SRIOV, Multis, Topology Awareness for NUMA, and many other instances. Please take a look in the project. DPDK is software data plane only? Yes, DPDK can use your CPU to do some data plane processing, but you can also use your accelerator like crypto devices, networking devices, or even the GPU. You can have an hybrid model with DPDK and get the best. Today we've tried to show you a little bit of what DPDK is all about and a little bit of what it's not about. We've taken some of the misperceptions that are out there in the industry and tried to bust those myths wide open. I hope this has provided some clarity to you, and I want to encourage you now to go to the project website, learn more about the project, join some of the mailing lists, and follow us on Twitter. Oh, and come and join our community. We're always welcoming new people. Thank you.